pituitary gland hormones. First, let's draw the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus, which is above it. PG stands for pituitary gland. And then we'll divide uh, most of the pituitary gland into the anterior pituitary gland. Sometimes people get an adenoma in this part of the pituitary gland in the front part. And then the back part is made more of nervous tissue, just like the brain. And then the front is more epithelial tissue, uh, like a typical gland. Okay, so we're going to go over all of these different hormones that are um, either made or released from the pituitary gland. And uh, we'll put them in different colors for their names and uh, their targets and their functions. So let's start with... Oop, you couldn't see that. So first is uh, ACTH, adreno, cortico, tropic hormone. And I know that's a mouthful, it's a big word, but adreno means that it's going to target the adrenal gland. Cortico means it's going to target the cortex or the outer part of the adrenal gland. And tropic means it's going to make the cortex of the adrenal gland release hormones that will, um, well, anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. So adrenocorticotropic hormone, and it will target, I'm going to put that in blue, then... And then we'll do the function in um, green, or maybe let's do it in um, orange. So it targets the cortex of the adrenal glands, and the function is um, then that it causes a secretion of the following hormones. Aldosterone, cortisol, and testosterone. Under certain circumstances, um, there are a couple other sex hormones, like even estrogen that can come out of here. But just to simplify, these are the main ones that we're talking about being released from the cortex. So this is the function. The target is the cortex of the adrenal gland. And the name of the hormone is ACTH. That will be number one of nine that we're going to go through. Okay, then next up, another big arrow. Let's do thyroid stimulating hormone. or TSH, so highlight that in yellow. And then in blue, the target of TSH is the thyroid gland. And it causes the thyroid gland, so get your orange, to causes secretion and actually production, so of thyroxin, which is your thyroid hormone. So secretion of thyroxin is the function. The target, meaning the receptors for this hormone, are found on the thyroid gland. And that is number two. Then the third hormone
put on here is a follicle uh, stimulating hormone. And I think I'll put that right together with, um, well, I was going to put it with luteinizing hormone, but okay, so follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So these are two different hormones. So follicle stimulating hormone is FSH and luteinizing hormone is LH. That gets us to one, two, three, four. And both of these will target the ovaries and testes, so they target the gonads. And they cause secretion of um, sex hormones, such as testosterone or estrogen. Now, it does certainly get more complicated than that. Uh, the, the amounts of follicle stimulating hormone at different times in the month for a female um, will cause the maturation of a, an egg or a couple of eggs and then luteinizing hormone is a key to the actual ovulation of the egg but primarily the way that they have those effects is by causing estrogen and um, progesterone to be released from uh, the ovary and then in the male uh, testosterone um, and sperm maturation are stimulated by these hormones. So the most simple way to think about it is that follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone regulate the reprodu reproductive cycles of both men and women. Okay then we can look at growth hormone next. So we'll go back up here. Maybe I'll put one like right here. So growth hormone targets pretty much all the cells in the body. So in blue, there's receptors for growth hormone on most of the cells in your body. But what usually gets focused on is the bones and muscles. And so then the effect, very generally speaking, is growth and repair of oops growth and repair of tissues in the body so sure enough we make less growth hormone as we age and we don't heal as rapidly so growth and repair targets most cells next up prolactin You can see lact in there, like lactation, and sure enough, this hormone is important for milk production in females. And it does, it is produced in men, not very much of it though, and um, they don't necessarily know all of its functions, and it is possible actually with a hormonal imbalance for a man to lactate, although it is not common. So targets, so we're mostly going to talk about females here for what we know it does in females. It targets the mammary glands and causes um, milk production. And um, I uh, nurse both of my kiddos, and it's one of my favorite things to talk about actually with the how uh, nursing works with the whole supply and demand thing. So I'll try to um, not go off on too much of a tangent here. But it is interesting with prolactin, you make more prolactin in the middle of the night. And so a woman will make her um, most amount of milk during the night and then she'll have the most available in the morning. And most women that have nursed will notice that their supply does go down throughout the day. They are still making it, but not as much as they do in the early morning hours. And of course, getting enough rest and good nourishment is important also for um, making milk. 
And then right along with that, um, we'll put, uh, or actually oxytocin, I'm going to talk about now because it makes sense to, but it is not released from the same part of the pituitary gland as those others. It's released from the back. It's actually made in the hypothalamus. And then it goes down from the hypothalamus along axons, neurons, and then it's stored in the pituitary gland. So it's pretty cool. But it's released from the pituitary gland. It's called oxytocin. And this, a very important hormone, is essential for uh, labor contractions, for orgasm, and for milk ejection. So, oops, blue. So it targets, uh, it, it targets uh, the uterine muscle, and uh, it um, also targets the mammary, mammary glands. And it seems to have a widespread uh, brain effects as well. And these will all make sense then when you think about its functions. So targeting the uterine muscle, it's important for labor uh, contractions and ironically enough, orgasm, which is uh, it causes uh, contractions throughout much of the reproductive tract. And then targeting the mammary gl glands, it allows um, milk ejection or milk letdown and it's interesting that a woman can make plenty of milk, but not let that milk down if she is tense and uptight. So oxytocin um, needs to be released, is, is only able to be released in, in adequate amounts for the most part when a woman starts to relax at least a little bit, and then that will allow the milk to come out and feed the baby. And then... Uh, Oh, and actually I had a personal experience with this when I was milking a cow for the first time and someone was trying to teach me how to do it. And then the lady finally said, she was like, oh, you need to stop doing that because this cow is never going to let down uh, with you around. You're making her uptight. And I thought that's exactly how it is with new moms sometimes. They get really nervous and then they have a tough time with their ejection reflex. But usually within a month or so, it's all working just fine. And then... Um, the widespread brain effects of oxytocin are very important for its bonding effects. It seems to be the, bo the bonding hormone of humans. It causes us to bond with a baby, and actually because it is released during, oxyto or during orgasm, oxytocin is key for bonding between men and women during sex, or at the time of orgasm in any case. So orange for functions, labor contractions, orgasm, milk ejection, and bonding. Blue for targeting the uterine muscle, the mammary glands, and the brain. Then we'll go um, back over here for melanocyte stimulating hormone. MSH. And you see melanocyte, those are the cells in our skin that make pigment. So this targets melanocytes. And causes the melanocytes to produce pig pigment. So we release more of this when um, we are in the sun, and then that allows our melanocytes to produce pigment that will protect our skin from getting a sunburn. Interestingly, what can happen is that if someone is wearing sunglasses all the time when they're out in the bright sun, then their brain is not recognizing as much of the sunlight, and they release less of MSH, and then that can have 
the unfortunate effect of causing them to get a worse sunburn. Now, I've read that this can happen. I've never run into anyone that told me, oh, I wore sunglasses all day while I was skiing and I got a terrible sunburn. But anyway, it is interesting to think about. Okay, and then we have the very last one. I know this video is getting a little bit long, but put one last one that comes out of the posterior pituitary gland. And it's antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. And it targets the kidneys and especially, we'll learn more about this later, so I want to bring it up now, especially the collecting ducts of the kidneys. And its function is to cause the kidneys to retain more water, so water retention. So if you're dehydrated or your blood pressure is low, you'll release more antidiuretic hormone and then that will help you to retain more fluid in your kidneys so your urine will be more concentrated. Okay, so I'll go over them one more time just for fun. So, hormones released from the anterior pituitary gland are ACTH, thyroid stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, melanocyte stimulating hormone, prolactin, and growth hormone. And then the two hormones, I'll use purple for this, two hormones released from the posterior pituitary gland are oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. The release of all of these hormones is regulated by hormones or neuronal signals from the hypothalamus.